Well, uh, we've, uh, we're to the third and final part of what we would call holy habits. Holy habits. We've done part one, part two, and now we're getting into part three. Uh, you make your habits and then your habits make you. Uh, I will say this long before success fails, a successful habit is laid aside. So we're going to look at the, the things that we are habits and uh, what we do consistently. Destiny uh, arrives uh, one day at a time and one hour uh, uh, at a time as well. And so we're going to believe and trust God that he's going to help us. So let's look here. Uh, we're going to start, up, uh, start off tonight with the scripture that we started this series off with. It is in 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20. Three. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. That means set you apart completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We can't do but nothing about what was done yesterday. And if we loom too far out in the future, it can uh, uh, seem a little bit uncertain or maybe even scare you a little bit or the, the looming battles. But what makes the difference is what we do today. And so those three areas, spirit, soul, and body, uh, we started off the series and talked about uh, uh, your spirit, you pray, you worship to stimulate your spirit, uh, you read, you get informed, you study uh, uh, to uh, stimulate your mind, and then you uh, physically, uh, you move, have some activity, uh, eat better, eat less, move more uh, uh, to be able to stimulate your physical man. All three areas, God uh, is God's and he, he lays claim to them. So uh, those kind of habits that are, are we've talked about that could help, that, help us in that way. So I'm going to just kind of uh, share with you maybe a few, uh, uh, not long, but a few unwritten habits uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, I've implemented. Yeah, you know, you got real practical habits, but there's a few, uh, there's a few kind of unseen habits that I've just always kind of uh, implemented and really not talked much about. But let me share just a few of them with you tonight. And habits is something what you do daily, what you do consistently, what you do faithfully. Faithfulness is a long obedience in the same direction. But what you perpetually and consistently do is, is, is what you'll become. It will determine uh, what uh, uh, will, will happen. The Bible says in Matthew 6, I believe we shared with you, that what God sees in secret, he rewards openly. Nobody sees their habits but you and me, but God sees them. And so uh, faithfulness has a future. Faithfulness always gets rewarded. So let's look at a few things uh, just, to, uh, just, to, uh, just to see uh, things that can help Ourself. One of the things that I try to practice uh, habitually, it's not every day or every week, but it is pretty constant, uh, is this. Number one, the habits that will help you is habits of examination. Uh, habitually and uh, uh, continually, I over not every week, not every day, but pretty consistently, I will take time to examine where am I really? The Bible says this uh, uh, in 1 Corinthians 11, says, let a man examine himself and, uh, and, and, and see where he is at. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, examine ourselves to see whether we be in the faith. It is important that we take examination. The book of Haggai, things was not going well. They were, uh, uh, they were sowing big but not reaping big. Uh, they were doing a lot of right things, uh, but a lot of wrong things was uh, happening. And so the scripture tells us this, consider your ways. You give much, but you bring in little. And everything you try to store up, it's like storing up uh, uh, with uh, money in a bag where there's holes in it. 
And so it was not going well for them. They was doing some things right, but it was not going well. And so he said, consider your ways. And the issue was they were much more into building their thing than, God, than God's things. He said, you're doing well. You live in your well-paneled houses and all is well, but my house, my work lies in ruins. So can consider your ways. So we're to examine ourselves, I think, uh, uh, from, from time to time. And we just need to look and see where we are at really. Some of the questions I ask myself is this. If everybody in America had the same type of prayer life that I have, uh, could I expect revival in the land? Hmm. If everybody in America uh, read the Bible the way that I read it, or the way I'm reading it now, uh, could I expect a more biblically informed people? Uh, uh, and here's another area of examination. Uh, it is, uh, you heard the old, is where it used to wear the bands sometime back, what would Jesus do? I will ask myself this, what would Jesus watch? Would he watch what I watch? Uh, could he fellowship with me at the movie I'd be partaking of? Uh, examine your uh, relationships. Where are they really at? Uh, what's happening with your relationships? Nothing, is, nothing stays stagnant, uh, whether it be in your marriage, uh, your ministry, uh, your friendships. You're even bonding closer together or slowly drifting apart, but it never stays stagnant. Examine the most important relationships in your life and where are they really at? Examine your vision. Examine where, where am I going and where am I at? Am I making steps towards that vision? Uh, the goal that I set, am I making some significant steps towards that goal? So it's vitally important uh, for us to examine ourselves. We go to a doctor, we get a full body examination, they do a CAT scan, an MRI, uh, maybe, maybe a full body exam, whatever it may be. And we don't want them to come back and tell us a deceptive lie that we're all good if in fact we may not be good. We may not like uh, the outcome of the examination, but if we know the truth of it, then we can begin to engage and make some differences. No, you're, you're unhealthy here. You've got a problem here. There's a spot there. Uh, and we need to take care of that. So you want the truth uh, from your caretakers of your health, your doctor. So uh, one of the habits that is important, uh, habits of the habits of attitude. And, uh, and maybe ask some of the people that, that would be of your family, uh, especially your spouse and different ones, friends. Uh, just ask them uh, with uh, no judgment, no repercussion. How's my attitude been lately? Well, you seem frustrated or you seem angry a lot or your, your tone is a little bit harsh or, 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 you're, or you're doing well. I appreciate your encouraging words, whatever it may be. It's important to have consistent times of uh, examination. All right, this next one here uh, is, is, this one has really helped me to stay on track in times of adversity in ministry. Uh, and this is this, this is the habit, the habit of regardless of what has happened or what is happening to continue to step forward in the will, the purpose, and the vision of God. Going forward, taking a step forward. It may fall, all fall apart. But if you keep going forward, it may fall in place. And that's why I encourage you, if you were to judge Christ uh, at the time of the, uh, of the trials and the scourgings and the whippings and the beatings, and you say, whoa, man, his ministry is over. It was going so well, but now it's crashed and burned. Well, not quite. His journey was not quite over yet. He was still on his journey. He was going to a cross, and there he died for the sins of mankind. He said, well, now it's really done. No, he was still on his journey. He went into the grave. He's buried. There's a Roman guard around a, around a big rock that seals his tomb. Uh, yeah, he's for sure gone. No, he's still 
on his journey. And on the third day, the rock rolled away, uh, the, uh, uh, the Roman guard was put away, and he rose, he rose to fullness of life. So let me encourage you to this. Uh, be careful that you don't judge yourself or somebody else's journey as it's over for you. It may be at 1130, but the clock keeps ticking, and eventually that hand keeps going up, and it's right back there on top again. So I want to encourage you, whatever has fallen apart, just keep going forward. If you're not sure what to do, stay consistent. Keep going forward. If people, people will cheer you and then they will begin to jeer you. People will enter your life and then there will be people that will exit your life. Those that was loyal to you maybe end up hating you. Keep going forward. Because if somebody has exited and rejected you in life, keep going forward because there's others in your future that's going to enter your life that is even going to be healthier or better still. So there you have it. Uh, we have habits of examination. You have habits of, of uh, going forward regardless of what has happened or what is happening Keep going forward and staying faithful and moving forward in the vision of God. And the last one uh, for tonight, this is a vitally important one, is this. Let sacrificial serving be a part of your life, all of your life for the rest of your life. This is what I tell people in this. There's times that we have to adjust our pace. There's times that other things come along. There's times that we uh, can't do as much as we did at another time. There's times that maybe you begin to have children, young families, and you don't have the free time like you did as a single person. Or there comes a time that maybe you have a health battle. Maybe there comes a time that, you know, whatever changes. But this is what I tell people, is whatever you do, whatever you do, keep one foot in of serving God uh, in some sacrificial form and continue to serve and to benefit those that can't benefit you back, maybe. And it is to help those that can't help you back. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelations, it says this, be faithful unto death and you'll get the crown of life. Be faithful to uh, the last day of your life and be faithful if it kills you in life. But whatever you do, keep a foot in and keep serving God. We may slow down, but we never retire. We may adjust our pace, but we keep on walking. And I just want to encourage you this, that what God said to you in your, in your life, in your heart, in secret, you will see openly and you will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Just keep moving forward. Just keep taking uh, periodic examinations to see where we're really at. Just keep going forward in sacrificial service and in serving God and just perseverance outlasts problems, perseverance outlasts persecution. And if you just stay with it, eventually a new day will dawn, a new season will come. Uh, the, the, the sun will shine a little brighter. The air will be a little bit cleaner. Uh, there'll be a little bit more zest to your step. And eventually what you feel that you was never going to see, you begin to see signs of, then you really begin to see it and you begin to rejoice in the goodness of God in the land of the living. So there you are with holy habits. Keep the holy habit, examine yourselves. See where you're at in your health, in your purpose, in your family, in your relationships, in your finances. Examine yourselves. I want to encourage you, regardless of what happens, what has happened or is happening, keep moving forward. Because the enemy, when bad things are ha just happened or are happening now, he wants to paralyze you fear with fear. And like the one guy at the, in the gravestone, it said, uh, uh, that died age 24, buried age 64. Mean this, he died while he was still living. Don't die while you still got breath. You may get knocked down. Uh, the righteous man gets knocked down seven times, but the Lord lift him, lifts him up every time. 
either be in one or two possessions, either be up or getting up. I feel so tired, I can't go on. Just keep on keeping on, keep on walking and make the determined decision. I am going to serve God and, and times that sacrificially serve God in some form or passion. I may, I, I may have to adjust my pace, but I am going to do that and I'm going to continue to serve God. Dr. King said this. Uh, he said, not everybody can be famous, but everybody can be great because greatness is found in serving and everyone can serve. Just get out there and serve.